I always do that. Okay. Uh, good afternoon again, everyone, uh, and welcome to this afternoon's e-learning session. My name is Helen Chan, and I will be your moderator this afternoon, along with Mark Goldstein and Joe Packham. Um, for the next 30 minutes, we'll be reviewing Lesson 29.1 on concepts of slope from the Intro to Algebra program. Okay, we are presenting a series of three live sessions this afternoon. Uh, the first one on solving proportions, with guess and check has already ended. Uh, this is the last group of the live sessions that we'll be doing for the semester. So uh, hopefully you'll be able to join us for the next one as well. Um, and you know that you can always access our archive sessions uh, through our website by clicking uh, the watch session button uh, of the session that you want to access. Okay. Um, if you are watching this as a pre-recorded session and wish to contact us for any assistance, um, here's our email addresses. Uh, feel free to contact us with your questions. Okay. Uh, going back to the first page, while you're waiting, warm up. Um, seems like now everybody agrees that um, these are these answers are correct. Uh, I did put a bonus problem um, at the bottom here, which is. Oops, I didn't want that. Okay, that finding um, the distance from B to F. You know, students should be able to do this if you fill them a um, a question like this because uh, the lesson on Pythagorean theorem um, comes before the slope lesson. So um, yeah, thanks. Uh, I think Joe was the one who did that, maybe. Um, and this and this actually turned out to be whoever did this one. This the square root of uh, 137 is actually what I uh, got as well, and we can just read that in the radical form. Okay. Any questions before we move on? No questions. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, so here are the lessons uh, goals for 29.1. Concepts of slopes are actually informally introduced earlier in contexts such as. Um, Solving geometric pattern problems, rate problems, and uh, money problems. In the first part of this lesson, um, we will find slopes on a grid just by counting distances. And then in the second half of the lesson, we extend the definition of slope to a uh, coordinate plane. And we find slopes by computing the difference in the vertical and horizontal distances using this, uh, the slope formula. Okay. Okay, so uh, one way, uh, this is by the way, this is uh, in your teacher um, uh, guide, okay. So one way to develop a concept, um, a, a conceptual intuition about whether slope is positive or negative is using this diagram right here and, you know, imagine that the line is the portion of a mountain, you know, and, um, you know, the same way that we read from left to right, we can ask the students to kind of use their fingers, oh, I have a finger here. So it, they can just, you know, um, use the finger to walk um, on the mountain from left to the right, just like the way we read. Okay, and so if we're moving up the mountain, the slope is positive, and um, if you are going down, then the slope is negative. Okay, and the steeper the mountain, okay, the larger the slope in you know in absolute terms. Okay, we can encourage students to check computational solutions with this general um, you know, conceptual notion. Okay? Now when we're applying the definitions for slope, we can um, want to emphasize the formation of these little triangles right here. Okay? These triangles uh, using directed line segments here uh, to show the vertical and then the horizontal changes. Okay? Vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal. Okay, um, you know, you first move in a vertical direction and then you move in a horizontal. Okay, um, the, the the phrase, you know, when we're tracing a path from one point to another, becomes very important because it helps students make sense of the directional distance uh, components in the slope formula. Okay, um, we often hear slope being referred to or described as you know rise over run. Um, just beware. Okay, 
Um, I, I used to use it as well, but just kind of be careful because you know this tends to be misleading for students because when we say rise, it often you know the the word itself means you know rise means up, right? Uh, increase, you know, go up, right? So um, you know, and that's not always the case for vertical change. Um, you know, we're not always going up. So using a more accurate uh, informal definition of slope, such as uh, you know vertical change over horizontal change instead of a rise over run, will probably help diffuse the misconception. Okay. Yes. As we move, thank you for whoever added that from one point to another. As we move from one point to another. Okay. Um, here we go. Okay. So this is SP two from week twenty nine. We have two lines on this grid. Okay, and we're going to find the slope of these lines by counting distances. Um, we use this page to explain to students that the slope of a line is a number that is assigned to its slant, okay, based on the steepness, sorry, um, and the orientation, okay, and the slope is really a ratio of vertical change over a ratio of vertical change to horizontal change as we move from one point to another. Okay. Uh, one thing that might be helpful, okay, it might be a good idea to draw a diagram like this one uh, to help students remember that if we're going up, okay, like pretend this is my point. If I'm going up, then uh, then the change is going to be positive. If we're going, you know, down, then the change is negative. And if we're moving to the right. Positive, and if we're moving to the left, the change is negative. Okay. And by the way, there's something similar to this, although it's not in color, uh, but it is in your teacher guide. Okay. Okay. So um, for problem number one right here, it, to go from point K to L to find the slope of KL, we're going from K to L, and I've already actually, um, um, you know, put in these uh, directional. Um, uh, arrows here. Uh, if we want to go, then we would have to go up first, and then go to the right. Okay. Now try to focus on making sure that the students know which direction they have to travel before even counting the distances, because it's very important for students to get the directions in order. Okay. Once we draw the directional arrows right here. Then we can just count the distances. Okay, so now we go, you know, um, so from K to L, we have to go one, two, three units up. Okay, and Joe, if you will help me record the, um, the. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that that's good too. Or in, we're going in the positive direction, right? If we're going up. We're going in the positive direction, and then, if we, and then from here on, we're going to go one, two units um, to the right, or also again in the positive direction. Okay. Um, therefore, now we have a ratio of positive three to positive two to describe the slope of segment KL. Okay. Now, um, I let, let me see. I have one, two, three, four of you, five of you. Okay, uh, Joe, you will want so the the well before I tell you what to do. Two things I want you to do on this page, okay? And I'm going to set the timer in just a moment. Um, I want you to first determine, just by looking, okay, whether the slope is positive or negative, okay? And also, I want you to find the slope of each segment by counting the vertical and horizontal change, okay? So here we go. Joe, you will do number two. Mark, you will do number three. Connie, you will do number uh, number five. Just ignore. We we did skip number four. Okay, uh, Shelley, you will do number six. Pat, you will do number seven. Okay, and the reason is um, this page actually has uh, more problems than these, but I've um, omitted some of them just to so we can focus on a, a few particular ones. Okay, so go ahead. So two things: positive and negative. And then the slope. Okay. And I'll set the timer for one minute, although I don't think you'll need it. Uh, timer. Okay. Start timer. And I'm going to go again. I 
I will fill in number one. Number one is and go ahead and um, if you if you if it's possible to simplify your uh, slope, um, go ahead and do that. Okay, and write it in simplest form if you can. Okay, thanks. If you are um, just waiting, looks like everybody is pretty much done. Uh, the timer will just go off in the okay there. Um, I if you look at the you know these first three that are in blue right here as one group, and then you look at the green ones as another group. Uh, what do you notice about each group of uh, of slopes? So what do you notice about one, two, three? What do you notice about five, six, and seven? Good observation. Yes, they are the same. Um, can you make any conjectures about why they are the same? It's just magic. Everybody is typing. I like it. Okay. Okay, because they have the same slant. Okay. Wow, this is what everybody's typing. I gotta make sure I read everything. Uh, okay. Blue are all okay, the slopes are all the same. Blues are all positive and greens are all negative. Each group has the same slope within it. Line must either have the same same line must have the same slope, okay, because they're all on the same line. Okay. Uh, they're all on the same okay, so we think that it has to do something with the fact that they are all on the same uh, line, and we'll we'll explore this idea a little more in, on, in the next slide. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is on this next page here. Students practice finding slopes of various lines. You know, it's not just the two that we have before. Now we have a whole range of slope uh, lines. Okay. And uh, we're not. I'm not actually going to have you do it, but I do want a few uh, comment on a few things. Okay. So after this page is uh, completed. Again, same, pretty much the same thing. You know, they have to determine whether the slope is positive or negative first, and then they have to um, ca um, count to get the um, uh, slope. Okay. Now, a few things we can summarize though is after they've done these, ask them. You know, how how can you tell if the slope or line is positive or negative, either by looking at it graphically or by looking at them numerically? Okay. And I apologize. I, I should have filled these out so you can see them better. But. Um, another thing you can ask is, you know, what characteristics of line segments? What are the, some of the characteristics that uh, of line segments that have the same slope? Okay, this is also uh, a good opportunity to discuss the difference between a line and a line segment, and uh, the shorthand notation for each. You know, we can talk about how the line goes infin you know, infinitely, and then while a line segment has finite, you know, endpoints and so on. And finally, we can also challenge students to apply the definition of slope and logical reasoning to determine the slope of a um, a horizontal line here, like PQ, and a vertical line. Because if you notice, I mean, here it's not included, but um, I, I can't remember if on that page um, they are asked to compute these. But but you can certainly ask them to, you know, you can have a discussion about these. Okay, and we'll, we'll see that in a moment. Okay, um, this is in your teacher guide. Also, a line with no slope means it's a vertical line. Okay, not a horizontal line. Okay, students often mistakenly think that no slope means zero slope. That those two are equivalent, and it's not true. Okay, there's also a mathematical background which I didn't include in um, in in our slides here that talks about why you can divide by zero, and that. Which helps, you know, it helps to explain why the slope of a vertical line is undefined. Okay, so make sure there, there's this lesson has a lot of information, uh, and I really encourage um, teachers to um, review those um, mathematical backgrounds and teaching tips. It's it's very, you know, you know, it's it, it's got a lot of good stuff in it. Okay. 
Okay. Um, I like this exercise. Okay, so after they've done the, you know, silk no, silk passes, they come to this page here where um, they have to draw line segments. Okay, and um, I like this exercise because it's um, it's kind of like working backwards. Okay, so now you're gi you're given the slope and you have to draw the line that meets that can that has a particular slope. Okay, um, let's see. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, okay. Why don't I have Connie take, uh, if you, I don't know if you know how to do it, but if you can draw uh, your line using a red color so we can quickly identify your slope, okay? Uh, Mark, if you will take, now I'm going to give you Mark a hard one, so I'm going to hold on from that. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, you know what, Mark? I will have you do two of them, okay? You will do the green one and the blue one, all right? Uh, Joe, you will do this orange one, which is three, slope of three. Uh, Pat, you will do the purple one. And Shelly, you will do the last one, negative two, the black one, okay? So everybody, if you, I don't know if it's possible to use the colors. Oh, I think it is, yeah. So if you want to try to use the same color as the slope, so that way we can kind of check everybody's work, okay? In a classroom, you probably wouldn't have to do this, but, you know, um, because it's just one student doing, you know, working these out on their own um, uh, uh, packets. So it's, it's not a problem, okay? All right, wow, everybody's like bunched up on the left side of the, of the whiteboard. Okay. Okay, Connie, I'd like you to check the green and the blue ones to make sure they are correct. Okay, Mark, I'd like you to check the orange one. Uh, Jill, check the purple one. Well, oh no, purple's not done yet, sorry. Pat, which one are, are you still working on yours? Oh, okay, okay, that one is yours, okay. Um, and uh, Pat, if you will check Shelly's work, which is the black line. Shelly, if you will check uh, Connie's red line, okay? And just uh, if you guys will click on happy faces when the, you agree with what's done. Okay. So if I see a happy face, I know that you have checked it and you agree with it, okay? Oh, well, that's even better, whoever th did that. Oh, this is starting to look very cute. Okay, while we're doing that, um, just kind of listen to what I'm uh, about to say, okay? So um, what, what are we supposed to notice uh, when we're looking at um, this first group of three, uh, these three slopes? Okay, they're supposed to be going uphill. Okay, so they're all uh, supposed to be positive. Uh, any other um, um, observations? So like the red one, the green one, and the blue one. Well, the blue one and the green one, because they're so close to each other, it's probably easier to observe. They are parallel. That's right, Shelly. I, I would agree with you. And if we could actually drag the, um, the I mean, you don't have, Joe, don't do that. It's, it's okay. Um, but um, if we actually put the, the red one closer, we probably could notice that they are no, parallel. Oh, well, we did it. Thank you. Um, and then um, which one do you think the students will have difficulties drawing the line for? Do you think, uh, which one of these do you think would be, create the most difficulty? Okay, Shelly thinks that it's the negative uh, times the quantity one half. Okay. Oh, good. Okay, you're referring them by the color. Okay, Pur uh, blue. Some people say blue, purple, blue. Okay. 
Mark is saying I agree with the you know uh, with Shelley's response. Okay. Yeah, where does the minus sign go? Where is the purple one? What what do we know about the slope of this one uh, of the purple one? So what we could do, I guess, is the same way that we did the um, the um, cups and uh, markers model when we first, you know, model the, what's inside the parentheses and then turn everything to reverse. I suppose that we can first draw a line with a, a line segment with a slope of one half, okay. And then take this mirror image, you know, um, you know, uh, about the y-axis, right? So um, I guess that would be one way of doing it. But anyway, okay. Any questions before we move on? So this is a good exercise, I think, because really working backwards it makes them think a little bit more, uh, rather than just counting, you know, uh, distances. They have to think about how to draw the the segments now. Okay. All right. Okay. Now we move to the second part of the slope lesson, and you notice that we are beginning to see lines on a coordinate, uh, the coordinate plane. Okay. These lines are actually the same two lines as the ones on slope notes one, but they're not on the coordinate grid, and we're going to identify the coordinates. And I've actually done that to save us time. Okay. Uh, we can still use counting to find slopes, but we really want to make sure that students use the slope formula because Soon, oh, and whoever, time out. I, I just want to say, go ahead and include there. Oh, somebody just read my mind as we, um, to add that extra statement. Okay. So I was saying you can still use this, um, the, the count, counting method to find slopes, but we really want to make sure that the students use the slope formula because soon they'll see problems where only the coordinates for two points are given with no grid, so they have to know the formula in order to compute the slopes. And a lot of times uh, on standardized tests, they probably will be given only the coordinates with no graph, and they have to, you know, they really have to know how to use the, you know, apply the slope formula. Okay. Now to calculate the slopes for lines on the coordinate axis, we encourage the students to write the pairs of numbers under each other like this. You see how the x coordinates I circled them together like this, and then the y coordinates that cor put them right. Um, you know, below one another like this lined up because then that way they don't mix up the X's and the Y's, okay? And so for segment PQ right here, we can see, you know, what, what, what is the difference between, um, you know, the Y coordinates if we go from P to Q? Well, you got 2 minus 1, then the difference here is 1, okay? And then if we look at the Y, co uh, the X coordinates, the difference here is, uh, Minus two. Okay. So, what is the slope of segment PQ? Go ahead and type your answer in the chat box. Okay. So, Mark says uh, one over um, negative two. Pat says uh, negative one. Uh, over two, okay. And you know this confirms with what we stated earlier about the slope of PQ being negative here, because we we have to predict whether the slope is positive or negative just by looking at it. And if you look at PQ, actually is negative, and our answer turns out to be negative. So, phew, good thing it matches up, okay. Um, and what we can do is we can actually go back to using counting to confirm our answer, to double check our answer. So if I wanted to uh, double check, I can say, um, okay, I'm going from P to Q, so I'm going to go down one unit and then to the right two units, okay? And good. Uh, thank you for drawing the arrows, the directional arrows. So for segment KL right here, right here, okay, what is the difference between the Y coordinates? Go ahead and type in your chat box. Okay. And then also tell me what is the difference in the x coordinates.
And then finally, uh, I will have uh, Shelly, if you can type in the space that I'm pointing at, the slope for segment KN. If you agree with Shelly, uh, click on the happy face. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, yeah, th this is a really good um, uh, way of helping the students keep um, their coordinates in order. Um, because when the coordinates are written side by side, they often get the two mixed up. Um, but this way, um, they, it, it's a little bit easier for them. Actually, not. I don't think it's a little bit easier. I think it's a way better. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, again, these are the same lines that were on slope node, uh, slope practice one page on the slope practice one page. But now um, we're asking the students to calculate the slope by using the slope formula instead of counting distances. And the nice thing about using the same lines as before is that you know we know we should get the answer it's the same answers no matter how we determine the slope either by counting or by using the slope formula. Um, not going to have you do it, but I want to point out a few things that we want to summarize with the students here. Okay, uh, first you can ask them you know does the slope change when we choose different points on the line to compute the slope? And that was something that we kind of um, investigated a little earlier, but here the idea of having you know. Um, Compute having the students compute like the slope twice on the same line is to kind of show them that it, it is, you know, uh, you do get the same slope. So it doesn't matter which two points you choose on the line. Okay. Uh, another thing you can ask them is how can you tell if a line is uh, horizontal from the slope? Okay. Or same thing, you know, how can you tell if the line is going to be vertical from the slope? Okay. Is there something about the coordinates when you identify the coordinates? Is there something about the coordinates uh, that will give you a clue about whether the line is going to be um, having a slope uh, that is, you know, uh, uh, no slope or zero slope? Okay. And how can we generalize char the characteristics of lines with a positive slope or a negative slope? Okay. Just some, just some ideas for you to uh, think about, you know, that you would use to help. The students, you know, summarize these slope ideas. Okay. Okay. Um, on this page, uh, this layout is actually different than what you see in the student pages, I believe. Let me just double check on that real quick. But uh, here, what they're doing is um, they have to they have a given start. No, actually, this is the same one, um, same exact layout. You, they have four problems and. They are given a particular point to start with and a slope. So what they have to do is draw a line that goes through that point with that slope. Okay? And um, these right here, these little dots that I've created, these are movable. You can use these, you can put these on the, you know, on wherever you the coordinate is supposed to be. Okay, so feel free to move these as I assign them to you. Uh, Shelly, would you take uh, the red one, which is number one, okay, and you can move that dot to wherever point A is supposed to be, okay. Mark, you will do number two, or the blue one, okay. Again, you can pick up the little red, uh, blue circle and, you know, put it somewhere. Uh, uh, let's see, Pat, if you will do number three, okay. And uh, Connie, if you will do number four for us, okay. And Joe, if you would please set the timer for one minute. <laughs> or you want something to do? Okay, you can check everybody's work. Thank you. Okay. Um, so while you guys are working, I'll just make a few comments because I see that we're running out of time again. Um, this page is, uh, this exercise is similar to that drawing line segment um, on ST4 that you saw earlier. Uh, but now 
it's got a, you know, it's on a coordinate grid, and it has specific starting points. Before, you could just randomly choose wherever you wanted to start, right? Uh, a helpful tip for the students is to write the direction next to the number before they graph. Okay, so let me get my little pointer. So, for example, if I'm working on number one, uh, Joe, if you can help me do this, um, right next to the one, I can write uh, the word up, okay? Because the slope of one third means that we're going to go one unit up for every three units to the right. So I'm going to write one unit up and then three units to the right. And that kind of helps the students remember what they're supposed to do. Okay? Does that make sense, what I'm saying? Okay. And then um, what I should have asked you to do is can you predict which one, which of these lines that you were um, drawing were going to have the uh, steeper slope. You can have them do you know, either positive or negative. Okay. So um, let's see. So that's basically it. Um, not really going to have time to check. Hopefully everybody uh, did it correctly. Um, looks like, okay, Pat is starting at, uh, at 0, 06. So here was the starting point, and then the slope was supposed to be negative half, one half. Well, it looks right so far because I know I can see from the line that the slope is negative, and then I'm supposed to for every one over two, one every two. Yeah, it's um, it, it, there's a line tool on. Let's see, on the left side. Let's, okay, I'm going to point to Pat. See where my finger is pointing, okay, not the one on the right, but the one on the left, that's the line uh, tool that you can use to draw uh, straight lines, just for the future, you know, when you join us next semester for more sessions, right? Are there any questions, you guys? No questions? Okay, we went past a little bit, but, you know, thank you very much again for joining us. And, uh, you know, if you want to participate, make sure you log out and then log in to session 24. And I will see you uh, in about 12 minutes. I don't know. Okay. Bye. And